Welcome back to Depressing Concepts. On today's episode, I'm going to be talking about Jake and Logan Paul and how they're normalizing narcissism. Jake and Logan Paul, from here on out, I'll refer to the two of them as Jog and All, are two brothers who have taken off on YouTube in the last year or so. They are known for their energetic, fast-paced vlogs, being incapable of rapping, and being attractive. Among their more recent achievements is Jake Paul's autobiography titled It's Some Days, Man. I'd like to take a second to read an excerpt. I bought a Lamborghini because I'm insecure about the size of my penis. Whenever I drive my Lamborghini, I forget about how small my penis is. I wish it was bigger. It's so small. Really honest stuff. Joganal are in many ways indistinguishable from other vloggers. They come off as self-obsessed, insincere, and don't bother sharing any of the attention unless it's to their own benefit. What's interesting about Joganal is how they don't try to hide this as much as other vloggers might. Where other vloggers might try to thank their fans for helping them to reach a subscriber milestone, Joganal might say, or where other vloggers might try to avoid showing their viewers them physically pointing a camera at themselves, Joganal has no problem with this. So why is it that I'm so disgusted with Joganal pointing cameras at themselves while their fans clearly aren't? Well, I think part of the reason is because I point a camera at myself, like right now, and I deal with a lot of self-loathing and disgust with things I do as a result of that self-loathing, and so I end up projecting that disgust onto other people, and so when I see someone pointing a camera at themselves, my disgust with them pointing a camera at themselves is really just a deep disgust that I have with myself. Um, but mostly I think it has to do with the demographic that watches Joganal videos. A demographic that's made up of kids, like 12-year-old kids. And kids who have spent their formative years with Snapchat front-facing cameras and who never experienced the initial shame of taking a selfie. And who don't think there's anything wrong with a horde of people all pointing cameras at themselves running after another person pointing a camera at himself. So, Joganal points cameras at themselves and their fans point cameras at themselves. What does it matter? Who cares? Everybody's gonna die alone. Nobody asks to be born and happiness is fleeting. Well. That's true, but existential despair is kind of pretentious, and I'm really just upset because some girl hasn't texted me back, so I'm just going to keep going with this. Joganal's success is due to something called parasocial relationships. Parasocial relationships are relationships we form with people we can't actually communicate with. These relationships can be formed with celebrities, athletes, news anchors, musicians, or vloggers. What's unusual about these relationships is that we feel like we can know and understand another person when we've never actually met them. And vlogging is the best way to cause a parasocial relationship because vlogging has the appearance of being an intimate look into someone's life. This helps to explain why people would behave like this towards someone they've never seen before. <laughs> So here's what we know about Joganal's fans. They're young, they're mostly girls, and they've formed parasocial relationships with Joganal. And from this study, we can infer a little bit more. For instance, women are more likely to form parasocial relationships if they experience family and romantic loneliness. So vloggers are essentially filling a void. Roman Atwood is particularly exploitative of family loneliness by referring to his subscribers as family members. 10 million members of our family. Joganal, on the other hand, capitalize on romantic loneliness. Jake Paul, in particular, provides his viewers with constant updates on his marriage, like buying his wife a Tesla, mashing face on the 4th, or celebrating their one-month anniversary. And this is concerning, because people we form parasocial relationships with can inform what we consider to be normal. And so, when Jake Paul films and profits off of his marriage, it tells his viewers that a relationship isn't supposed to be personal and private, but something to be shared with the world. I know I kind of sound like a concerned parent who thinks Grand Theft Auto is causing school shootings, but is that as unreasonable as saying Jake Paul might be causing people to think a relationship is something it shouldn't be? I'm guessing we all know somebody on social media who's constantly updating us with how great their relationship is and how happy they are, 
and you can't really tell if they're trying to convince you or themselves if they're actually happy. And that to me is pretty depressing. Seven out of 10.